Good morning, good morning, good morning. What a privilege it is to see you all, nearly everybody out there smiling. Yeah. I don't think Lord can do it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You might notice these beautiful flowers here. They are a gift to our family. Wednesday night, my mother passed away. And uh, the circumstances, what they are out there in Arizona, uh, we can't go. We can't be there. And uh, it's just a hard, hard thing. So thank you, church, for loving us. Yes. And I'm speaking for myself and Sherry and Lita and Sherry. To, to say, y'all are such wonderful people. And you've, you've done such a great job of raising us. <laughs> we appreciate it. Amen. Sherry, we love y'all. Thank you. Well, let's worship the Lord. Amen. Yes. Let's worship the Lord. but we don't require
ministers here today, back and welcome. Just say good morning, and they're going to play through that song.
Jesus. We thank you for these beautiful people that you sent to our lives. We ask that you bless them today. Bless their marriages, Father. Elongate their life and their, their times together. We praise you for it. All praise you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Bryce, would you introduce all your guests to the with you today? <laughs> this is Stacy, my mom. I'm Stacy. Jeff, my dad. Jeff. Jeff. And CJ, my grandmother. <laughs> Bryce is going to be baptized after the morning service. Amen. And his youth pastor, Sister Laura, is going to baptize him. Amen. Now, Bryce, I hope everything's really good between you and your <laughs> I've really been worried about her doing it because, you know, she's so short. <laughs> Look, you got it wrong. Right. You got it wrong. Mm -hmm. 
you need to be as close to your people as you can, and you need to know that they're there for you, and they need to know you're there for them. Amen. And it makes a difference. And, and, and we appreciate that. And another one of our children from days gone by is our youngest granddaughter, Symphony, who is there on the Baptist row <laughs> with her fiancé, Ian. And they are going to be married in May on the 27th. 5th. 25th. 28th. 25th. And then. Anyway, I know it's in May, and it is in my calendar, but uh, they, they have honored Papa, oh, oh, that's me. Uh, I'm going to officiate the wedding. We're looking so forward to that. But I can't tell you how beautiful it is looking out over this congregation today. It is just beautiful. Um, Amen. Let's receive our morning tithe and offering. Let's worship the Lord by bringing Him His tithe and adding to that our offering. <laughs> Michael has been here before, but thanks for coming to me again. I don't want anybody out. <laughs> Truth is, I could have been really angry. <laughs> Father, we come into your house. And we give because we want to give. Not because we have to. Not because it's required by the church. We give because we love you, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to help us take these funds, reach the lost, encourage the saints, build the kingdom of God for your glory. And we'll thank you for it all. In Christ's name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, y'all been thinking about the Lord this week. Amen.
glad that those chains can be broken. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen.
God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. We're going to change the order of the service. Amen. There's a time for praising. There's a time for singing. There's a time for worship. There's a time for testifying. Amen. But then there comes a time for the Word of the living God. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father. Oh, God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here today. You're high and you're lifted up, God. Your train fills the temple. God, your word says in Revelation 4 and 10 and 11 that the 20 and 4 elders that are about your throne, how they fall down and they present their crowns unto you because you're worthy, O God. And they say glory and honor and power be to him that sit upon the throne. Oh God, we thank you, Lord, that you're in control today. We thank you, God, for your word today, God, that it's able to build us up, that it's able to sanctify us and give us an inheritance, God. Oh Lord, Holy Ghost, we ask you now to take control of this service. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Ghost, move in a mighty way today. Anoint every word that's spoken. God, I ask you right now, Lord, if there be anything between you and I, I pray, God, that you put it under the blood of Jesus. Sanctify and purify my mind, my heart, my body, my soul, God, my spirit. In Jesus' name, use me, oh God, as a yielded vessel. And speak your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is here today, church. Amen. You know, my spirit was heavy this morning. Uh, but it's not so heavy now. <laughs> Amen. That's the way, that's the way God is. I'm going to be starting this message today out of 1 Peter in chapter 1. So if you want to go ahead and turn there. I wanted to take a moment though and and uh, and, and recognize our our visitors that are here today. God bless you all. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's not by chance that you're here. Uh, God has you here for a reason. Amen. And God bless all of our friends and our family that are that are here today. As you all know, as Pastor Bill's already spoke, that that um, uh, him and Jerry and Sister Sherry, their, their mother, went home to be with the Lord last Wednesday night. Amen. So... Um, it was a, it was a time of heaviness uh, for me, but you know God moves, and uh, God has a word for us. He has a word, Amen. And today's message message is entitled the Rescue Mission. The Rescue Mission. Let's go to God's word, First Peter. I was going to read verse 6 and 7, but I'm going to start in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to the abundant mercy, you see God's mercy is renewed daily. Amen. He's a merciful God. His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. That's our blessed hope, church. Amen. Hallelujah. In times of crisis, we can hold on to that hope Amen. in Jesus. Verse 4, to an inheritance. Amen. To an inheritance. Your mothers received her inheritance. Yes. Brother Bill shared with me briefly earlier, but he said his mother's last coherent words were, I'm ready. Yes. I'm ready yes. to go home. I'm ready to meet Jesus. Yes. I'm ready. Are you ready today, church? Yes. She's reaped her reward. An inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that faded 
not a way reserved in heaven for you yeah. who are kept by the power of God through faith. <laughs> Amen. Unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein we greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be you're in heaviness through manifold temptations or discouragement. That's another word for the manifold temptation. Yeah. It's only for a season. Our hearts are heavy now. Our spirits are heavy now. Yeah. And that's normal. That's expected. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to declare unto you today, Brother Bill, Brother Jerry, Sister Sherry, that it's only for a season. That's it. <laughs> it's only for a season. Because God is going to get you through. Yes. Yes. Amen. According to his word, brother, that is an immutable oath from God. Yes, it he will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. Hallelujah. We are kept by the power of God through Glory. the Amen. Wherein we greatly rejoice now, though now for a season, if need be, you're in he uh, heaviness through manifold temptation that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, yeah. though it be tried with fire, might be found in the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ Jesus. Yeah. Church, our faith is going to be tried yeah. as by fire. Yeah. Turn back one book to the book of James. If you would, please. James in chapter 1 in verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. That's it. Count it all joy when you're tested, when your faith is tried. Count it all joy. <coughs> Excuse me. Our hearts are heavy. But he still reigns. Yes. Yeah. As we say a while ago. As Sister Rita spoke about the fire. As I spoke about the 20 and 4 elders. He still reigns. He's still on the throne. This is only a trial of our faith. We are kept by the power of God through faith. Jesus will see you through. Yes, he will. I just read that the trying of our faith is more precious than gold. Because the trying of our faith draws us closer to God. It makes us turn to him and trust him even more. One of these days we will praise and give honor and glory to the appearing of Christ Jesus. When he returns. When Jesus was standing on Mount Olivet. My throat's giving me fits this morning. When Jesus was standing on Mount Olivet. And he ascended into heaven. There was an angel there dressed in white. And he said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing? Because this same Jesus uh, that goeth away from you uh, will return again in like manner. He ascended on the cloud. And brother, he's going to return on the cloud. Amen. 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 That's our blessed hope. Yes, 
But we're going to go through some stuff here on this earth. We're going to go through some things. Y'all are going through some things right now, brother. But we've all gone through some things. That's true. Turn to somebody and say, I'm going through something. Even as Christians, brother, I went through so much last year in 2023, it would boggle your mind. It would boggle your mind. We went through some stuff that we never dreamed we would be even going through. But glory to God, He got us through it all. And not only did He get us through it all, things that you don't even know about, church. He got us through victoriously. Amen. He got us through where the end was greater than the beginning. Come on. Right. We're going to go through grief. We're going to go through depression. We're going to go through loneliness and despair and disappointment and loss. <laughs> Some of us are going to go through unbelief. There may be those here today that are struggling with unbelief. We're going to go through separation. But fear not. Come on. Because the Bible says that they that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn over to Isaiah, if you would, please, in chapter 41. I'm going to read very quickly in verse 10. Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not. Pastor Bill, Brother Jerry, Sister Sherry, fear thou not. Amen. For I am with thee. Say to the Lord. Glory. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Amen. I will strengthen thee. Yes. Glory. Yes. I will help thee. Yes. Amen. You're not alone. Yes. He's not going to leave you comfortless. No. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Yes. My glory. glory. Yes. Turn to Deuteronomy, if you would, chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and want and overtake thee. You see, church, we've been called out. We've been set apart. We're a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. God said, I'll never forsake you, but I'll be with you even into the very end of the world. Don't despair. Yes. My blessings are going to come upon you. My blessings are going to overtake you. You see, when you're walking, it says, if thou, let me finish that verse, if thou, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Sweet Lord, sweet Lord. God is saying, if you'll listen, you'll hear me. I'm speaking to you in that still, small voice. If you'll hearken unto the Lord thy God, God's blessings are going to overtake you. You can't run from them. You can't escape them. Amen. You can't hide from them. They're going to chase you down. Glory. They're going to come upon you. That's right. That's what it means to be a child of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You 
may be grieving now. You may be forlorn now. But God is saying, fear not. Yes. My blessing is going to come upon you. Blessed, verse 3, shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field or the country. In total Texas. Glory. Amen. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground. Not only you're going to be blessed, but your children are going to be blessed. Glory. And the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. God's going to meet every need. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face, and they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Oh. And the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou sittest thy end unto. <laughs> and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Yeah. This is an immutable oath. That word immutable means without change. That's it. It cannot change. It's unable to change. It's incapable of changing. When God makes an oath, it is eternal. Hallelujah. He cannot lie. Amen. He cannot go back on his word. No. Amen. God also makes promises. An oath is similar to a promise, but there is a little difference. <laughs> a promise is made by one person. I can promise you that we're going to go to El Chico at the church. <laughs> <laughs> That's my promise. <laughs> but brother, when God makes an immutable oath, an oath is given before a people. It's given before two or more. Amen. When the president puts his hand on the Bible and he swears an oath to protect this country, when I went into the military and I swore that I was going to protect this country from all enemies, foreign and domestic, brother, it was an oath. Yes. 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 And I was ready to give my life for it. Not just me, but all those in the service. Yes. Yes. When God makes an immutable oath, uh, He's making it, uh, amen, uh, before the Father uh, and the Son uh, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And it cannot be retracted. Amen. Let's look at Jeremiah real quick. It's one book right after Isaiah. <clears throat> And then I'm going to finish with this message. Jeremiah, <clears throat> we'll read in verse our chapter 38. I just remind you briefly, in Jeremiah chapter 9, I believe, that's where Jeremiah says, like a fire. And shut up in my bones. Amen. And that's how this word has got to be to us, church. Amen. It's got to be a fire that's inside of us. Uh, that no matter what, uh, amen, no matter the loss, uh, no matter the gain, uh, no matter the persecution, uh, no matter anything, that fire's got to burn. Yeah. We've got to keep our faith in Christ. Amen. Yeah. Jeremiah, a prophet of God. I'm going to be reading in, in chapter 38. I think I'm going to start in verse 5. King Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. 
The king of Babylon appointed Zedekiah <clears throat> as the king of Judah, over Judah. And uh, Zedekiah didn't listen to God. Zedekiah had itching ears. Zedekiah's prophets told him that the king of Babylon would not come against him. <clears throat> you see, church, there's people out there that will tell you that you're immune as a Christian. You're immune from all trials. You're immune from all pain. You're immune from all sickness. You're immune from, immune from all disease or all cancer or anything else. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, amen, uh, that God's people are still going to suffer trials. Yes, amen. It's not a popular word. It's hard for a lot of people to accept. Now, we do have a refuge in Christ Jesus. He is our healer. According to Isaiah 55. But we're going to go through some stuff. Jeremiah told the truth to Zedekiah. He said, the king of Babylon is going to come against you. And I'm here to tell you today that the devil will come against you. He came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He will try to destroy your hope. He'll try to destroy your belief. He'll try to destroy your family. He'll try to destroy your finances. He'll try to destroy your marriage. Symphony and, I'm sorry, young man, what's your name? Ethan. Ethan. <clears throat> Listen. Because the devil's predictable. He always enters in. Especially in young marriages. Verse 5. Then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand, for the king is not he that can do anything against you. You see, King Zedekiah was very sly. He had played the friend to Jeremiah. But when Jeremiah told him something that he didn't want to hear, he turned against him. Zedekiah knew that turning him over to the people would be far more worse than what he would ever do. Not everyone that says that they're your friend really are. Not everyone that says they're a Christian or a man or a woman of God really are. The Bible says that in the last days that perilous times are going to come. Men are going to be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They will have a form of godliness, but he said deny, but deny the power thereof. From such turn away for their forever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You will know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Amen. Verse 6. Then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of Amalek, that was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords. And in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. The dungeon was in the court of the prison. First of all, they cast him in prison for no reason. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to get you in bondage today. He wants to seize your mind, your emotions. He wants to apprehend you. He wants to stop you or imprison you. Some people are so imprisoned in their minds that they can't even function because of the imaginations and the thoughts and the disturbances of their mind. 
which include grief and depression and phobias and hallucinations and voices and things of that nature. They put him in the core of the prison <clears throat> because they didn't want the people to see and to revolt against them. They did it in secret. They wanted the man of God, the prophet of God, to die miserably and die obscurely, die of hunger and cold and thirst and fear. Josephus tells us that Jeremiah sunk up to his neck in the mire. Brother, he was deep. There was no life, no water, no food. This particular verse of Scripture doesn't tell us what Jeremiah said, but if you'll turn over one book to Lamentations in chapter 3, in verse 55, it tells us what Jeremiah said. <clears throat> My enemies chase me sore like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me. Waters float over my head. Then I said, I am cut off. I called. I called upon thy name, O Lord. Out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice. Hot not thine ear at my breathing, at my cry. Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. Thou saidest, Fear not. O Lord, thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul. Thou hast redeemed my life. Glory. <laughs> Zedekiah threw that prophet, that man of God, down into that, into that dungeon. Uh, and what did he do? He cried out to God. And God heard him. Yeah. And God delivered him. God sent somebody. <laughs> Let's read about that real quick, and then I'm going to close. Verse 7 in uh, Jeremiah, chapter 38. Verse 7. Now when Ebimelech the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs, which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin, Ebimelech went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah, the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon. And when he, when he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. And then the king commanded Ebimelech, the Ethiopian, saying, Take from thence thirty men with thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he died. King Zedekiah said, take 30 men in church. That's a type of Christ. Jesus Christ was 30 years old when he began his ministry upon this earth. Amen. And, and that represents, amen, that, that when, 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 when Ebimelech, the, the, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch, he took those 30 men. In essence, what it's saying is that he took Jesus. Amen. He took those 30 men, amen, to that dungeon. Uh, and they look down into that dungeon. Uh, amen, brother. Uh, things shortly changed. Uh, do you see what I'm talking about today? Uh, when Jesus comes on the scene, uh, things change. Uh, amen. Grief uh, turns into joy. Uh, amen. Depression uh, turns into joy. Hallelujah. All, all these things. Uh, amen. Uh, being lost uh, turns into salvation. Uh, Amen. Uh, sorrow uh, and mourning uh, turns into joy. Uh, amen. Uh, what does it say that they did? Uh, hallelujah. They took, uh, amen, let's read there in verse 30, in verse 10 and 11. 
So Abimelech took the men with him and he went into the house of the king under the treasury and took thence old cast clouds and old rotten rags uh, and he let them down by cords into the dungeons to Jeremiah. Amen. Uh, he took old rags. Uh, amen. They came up uh, and he threw them down to Jeremiah. Amen. Uh, what he did in essence, uh, he threw him uh, a lifeline. Uh, and that's what God is doing today. Uh, amen. Uh, he's throwing a lifeline uh, out to you. Uh, Brother Bill, he's throwing you a lifeline. Uh, Brother Jerry, he's throwing you a lifeline. Uh, Sister Sherry, he's throwing you a lifeline. Uh, amen. Uh, to the lost, uh, to the depressed, uh, to the name, to the sick. Uh, he's throwing you a lifeline today. He's saying, put it on. Amen. Put it under your arms. Wrap it around your waist. Put on Jesus. Amen. 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 That's your lifeline today. Hallelujah. But it goes a little deeper. A little deeper. And we're going to look at that and then I'm going to close. <laughs> Before I read that, I'm going to look at Romans. I'm going to read it to you real quick. You can turn there if you want to. Romans 8 and 34. Romans 8 and 34 says, Who is he that condemned him? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Uh, amen, church. Uh, we have uh, Jesus Christ, uh, the only begotten Son of God, uh, who is seated on the right hand of God in heaven, uh, and He is making intercession for you uh, and for me uh, and for all of us. Amen. Yeah. Jeremiah. Thirty eight. And Ebimelech the Ethiopian said unto Jeremiah, Put now on these old cast clouds and rotten rags under thine armholes, under the cords and here Jeremiah did so you see they gave a rope to Jeremiah then they threw down the lifeline the old clotted rotted rags old people don't think that you're ever too old to do a work for God don't think you're ever too old and young people that no man despise not you. They said, take the old rags and put them on over the core. Because that was a comfort. It prevented rash. It prevented injury. They didn't want to pull him out of that muck and mire. Amen. And cause him to be burned, rope burned. So he said, put it on. The rope represents Jesus Christ. And the, the lifeline, the old clotted rag, uh, rags, they represent the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will give you the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And I've already preached about the immutable promise and the immutable oath. Amen. So I'm going to close this message. Be of good cheer. Be of good courage. Amen. Jesus will see you through. Yes. Amen. 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 Sister Nancy, can we have a song, please? I'm going to open up the altar to everyone that's here today.
Let's all come down. E. This message was particularly for the grieving fam Sanders family, but it's for everyone. Everyone within earshot of my voice that's on this camera, that's on YouTube or Facebook, right now. If you're going through something, corporately, church, if you're going through something today, don't despair. Come up and let's pray. And God touch you. I'm going to open the altar and if anyone has a need, if anyone needs prayer, just let just come on up. If not, we'll be close. Father, we glorify you and we praise you. We thank you, God, for your word today. We thank you, God, that you are our lifeline. We thank you, God, that you have not forsaken us and will not ever forsake us. But you make it a way when there seems to be no way. Lord, I pray that you bless us. Pastor Bill and Nancy, Brother Jerry and Sister Melina, and Sister Sherry. Oh, God, draw them closer to me, Lord, during this time of grief. Comfort them. Give them peace, Father, that passes all understanding. Give them reassurance, God. Thank you. And carry them through, God, in the days to come. Bless all those that are here, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. We are dismissed. We want to invite everybody to stay for the black for the baptism. We want to invite everyone that can to stay for the baptism. It's going to be directly across in the fellowship hall. <laughs>